2014 may have been lackluster for regular movie theaters, but IMAX had a successful year, continuing to draw viewers to the big screen experience. And 2015 is expected to be an even bigger year for IMAX, with several blockbusters slated for release, including the next Bond movie and the seventh Star Wars film, The Force Awakens, which was shot using IMAX cameras. I spoke with IMAX CEO Richard Gelfond and asked him what makes the camera technology that IMAX uses so unique. The IMAX camera captures a lot more information than any camera around. So think of the IMAX screen as being a lot bigger. So to the extent you've captured it and gotten more information, you can show the audiences not only more information because of the size, but better resolution, better, uh, better brightness, better image, better pixelization, better resolution. It just looks really, really great. Does that make you feel that you will be able to withstand competition from the likes of China Giant Screen, which is partnering up with Deluxe and is aiming to take on IMAX, particularly in China? China Giant Screen has been around for the last uh, three or four years. I think we face competition in the United States from a number of different players, but our market share has either stayed the same or gone up in other markets. In China, it's gone up since China Giant Screen has been around. I mean, I think we're the only end-to-end -end solution. We're the only ones who have films that we specially make with filmmakers. You know, people can compete all the time, but we're comfortable with where we are. Well, you're also planning on introducing the laser projection technology. What's so unique about that? Projection technology today is based on xenon bulbs. And when you make them brighter, at some point they get so hot that they blow up. So that limits the size of the screen you can go on, and it also limits how bright the image can be. So we set out three years ago, we've invested $50 million. Uh, we started by buying some patents from Kodak, and then we've developed around them. And we've created a product which creates a brighter image, a larger image, better colors, um, you know, just a step above. Even though what we're doing today is the best out there, and let's say this is the difference, you know, it takes the difference to this. There's a historic backlog of 439 IMAX theaters worldwide. How many of these will have this laser technology? I think right now it's somewhere between 50 and 60. But um, you have to remember, we haven't even showed the public yet or, or the exhibitors what it looks like. We just finished our prototype. I saw it for the first time a month ago. One of the attributes also is you can build bigger IMAX theaters because of the brightness. So in places like China where there's a huge population, I think you're going to see the advent of even larger screens and brighter images. Rich, better screens, brighter images, laser projection, IMAX cameras. What else can we expect for the future? Well, we're looking at different businesses. So actually in China, we have a joint venture with TCL, the consumer appliance manufacturer, to create an IMAX in-home um, theater that we'll be launching about a year from now. So I think we'll try and take um, what's now the best theatrical experience and also create the best in-home experience. Would that not erode from your market share or would the price range just be too high? I think the price range, you know, will be too high for the average person. It'll be kind of aiming for, you know, people who are, are interested in very luxury uh, purchases. There's talk about expanding the 3D experience to a 4D experience with more sensory stimulation, uh, be it scents wafting into the theater or moving chairs, as some features that you see currently in uh, amusement park uh, theaters. Is this a direction that IMAX could go in? I don't think so. Um, some of those ideas you talked about exist in other countries today, and they're being tested. Korea, for example, is really into moving seats, and it works there. You know, IMAX sees itself as working with the best directors in the world, whether they're American directors or Chinese directors or Russian directors. And, you know, they don't really make their movies for, you know, smells to come in or for seats to hop up and down. Now, if they change their minds and the way they make movies, I, I would think, you know, we would think about it. But for now, we're trying to show their vision in the best way possible. And in my mind, that doesn't include water splashing on you. So... You are partnered with some top directors, and 2015 is set to be a blockbuster year for the movie industry at large, and particularly for IMAX. So we've got the next Avengers, which was 
huge in the world, particularly in China. We've got uh, Fast and Furious 7, Jurassic World, the next Star Wars, which is obviously going to be a huge success. Uh, we've got the next Bond franchise. So I, I think it's going to be, you know, from a box office point of view, one of the best years we've seen. The Chinese uh, movie market is growing, it's increasing, and Hollywood must be looking at this and thinking, how can we produce content to better adjust to that market, the so-called globalization of content? How is IMAX involved in that discussion? We're actually very much involved because we're in 60 countries right now. So a perfect ex example would be the last Transformers movie that Michael Bay made. Um, he filmed about a third of the movie in China, he had a lot of Chinese um, cast members, and it was actually a reality TV show where the winners became part of that movie. And as a result, we did more box office in China than we did in North America for Transformers. So I think almost no movie, blockbuster movie, is made in Hollywood now without an eye to how the Chinese audience would react to it. In addition, because the box office is growing, Chinese local production is growing. The budgets are getting higher. The, the special effects are getting better. Um, the thought of making movies for export is growing. So I think that change in demographic is having a profound effect in the way movies are made throughout the world.